And I would lie because I like this person. I need to protect him. Like, he has struggles. And I'm not going to, you know, rat him out. Like, that. I'm a ride or die. Blah, 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 blah. I look back. I'm like, I was that bitch. Like, I cooked. I cleaned. I did everything. The errands. The finances. Everything. I was the brains in the relationship. And I don't, like, I used to be, like, humble about that. But now, no, like... I'm not going to sell myself short. I know that I'm a wife. I'm a good ass wife. Hey, you guys, it's your girl, Kiara J, and welcome back to another video. If you are new here, welcome to the channel. Be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. If you are a return subscriber, as always, thank you so much for tuning in to me. I really appreciate y'all. If you have been around for a little bit, then you know that I recently opened up about my divorce journey and have kind of opened up about my abusive relationship. And so, y'all, this has not been an easy journey to navigate because I felt led to share a long time ago. However, I have been praying that God allows me to come from the best place possible because I don't want this to be like a bashing war or like, um, you know, like people attacking this person's character. Um, if anything, it's just to bring awareness and also to let people know like, these are real life situations, but not only are they real life situations, but we have to do better with holding each other accountable in these situations. And yes, like we were young and we had very little guidance from our families and our parents, but it's still no excuse because there are resources out there. So I just want to say like, y'all just bear with me because navigating through this has not been easy because I'm one of those people who definitely want to make sure I'm coming from a good place. I do consider myself a believer. I believe in God. I believe in the Bible. And I just really just want to, you know, genuinely be me. And me is a forgiving person. Me is a kind person. Me is a person who, you know, seeks understanding or goes to prayer and ask God for understanding, I should say, because leaning on my own understanding, <laughs> this is why I'm here. I really appreciate the support. And you guys continue to show me why I do it because there are some days where I'm like, I don't want to do this or it's very heavy or I don't want people to know our business or I don't want to like assassinate him because that's not my intent at all. But I know that people can take things out of context. And so I appreciate you guys who show up and show support to show me that, you know, there is a purpose. I have a purpose and there is a reason why I went through this and now I can help millions of women because I've had so many women reach out to me throughout this journey and men too, but mostly women um, sharing their stories or just, you know, like connecting and we being of encouragement to each other. I just want to say at the end of the day, my purpose for these videos again is to bring awareness to show people that it is real so that they are held accountable and the people around them will hold them accountable and also... You can really see the, the real life effects that these things have on people who experience these things. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into today's video, which I'm going to be talking about how I met my ex, how we got married, when the abuse, when the abuse arose, and kind of how I navigated through that portion of my life and I've been doing a lot of reflection so I want to talk about like things that have come to me through reflecting so yeah let's just get into this video so if you guys don't know I am prior military so is he so what had happened was we wanted up same place at the same time but at the time I was already kind of coming out of a situation and I wasn't looking for anybody well, this one particular day, we were in the same area and sparked conversation with one another. When we did that, um, from that point forward, he asked for my contact information. Um, long story short, it was just like a Snapchat. We kind of remained in contact through Snapchat, but nothing serious. As time progressed, he kept asking me on a date. I kept kind of like dubbing him. And then eventually, um, after a while, I did give in because I was like, you know, this guy's persistent. Like, I don't know about y'all, but like as a woman, I believe that a man who finds a wife is what the Bible says. So I believe in being pursued. So when somebody pursues me and they're persistent with it, it's kind of like, okay, like I want to see what this is about. I never know what this may bring, right? 
So I wound up letting him take me to go eat one day. And from that point forward, we had got on a phone call one day and we probably talked about everything there was to talk about with life. And uh, from we like clicked and next thing you know, he was coming to see me every weekend. So one of the biggest things I would say though, I have another story time on my channel kind of explaining that. So I'm not gonna go into like much detail about it, but I will say like he was driving two hours every weekend to come visit me and that was just that. Um, and so after that, you know, things progressed. Um, we got more and more serious. He took me to meet his parents very early on in the relationship. I had no idea the dynamics of their relationships, but as time progressed, I realized like it should have been something that I should have asked from the beginning because now those things were important. Like not having a relationship with his mother is important. And well, I would say uh, not having a relationship with her, but having a what he felt like a failing relationship with her was important and also a failing relationship with his adoptive dad I should say um and so and then not knowing his bio dad like that was a big thing in his life however I want to like not get too much into his personal life and try to focus more so on the relationship aspect that next year after we had gotten together one of my siblings had attempted suicide and came very very close to completing suicide um and it was probably actually it's one of the worst moments of my life it actually is the worst moment of my life that's the worst I've ever felt in my life. Um, and again, I was talking to this guy at the time. And he immediately was like, you know what? I'm getting off work. I'm going to come get you. And I'm going to drive you to Charlotte. Which was like, they had airlifted my siblings to Charlotte. So he was like, I'm going to take you. So we went there. He did stay there with me. He was not very um, present in that moment. You know, he just like on his phone. Or like, he's not like very supportive. But like, he's here. So, you know, whatever. But I'm going to give credit where credit is due. And he did drive me there. He did stay there with me. There were even nights where we slept in the parking garage. And we was just there. During that time, like I said, it was a very emotional time for me. And I remember like this one particular day, I couldn't, like, I couldn't sleep for all the days we were there. But this one particular night, we were sitting in the parking garage. And I said to him... Can you please pray with me? Can you please pray with me? And he wasn't a believer, but that day he actually took my hand and um, he prayed with me. And when we got done, I remember feeling like your your sibling is not gone. God, God is going to do a miracle. And God did do a miracle. So fast forward, that kind of like impacted our relationship in a way where we were getting ready to deploy. So it impacted our relationship in a way where... We grew closer. I started to trust him more. And, you know, I was very, very grateful that he showed up for me in that way. That is something we were probably not even not even a year yet. And for him to show up for me like that meant a whole lot to me. I was very appreciative of that and thankful to him because, again, he didn't have to do that. But... He was willing to go the extra mile. When we wound up getting deployed, though, I'm a social butterfly. Like, you know, I talked to a lot of people. I had a lot of male friends. Um, I had a lot of friends, kind of. And he started to, like, make me feel like my friends and family, like, really weren't there for me. And now, when I look back, it was manipulation. Like, he made me feel like every guy that... I knew basically it was wanting to get in my pants. But to me, that essentially said, like, you don't trust me. And, like, you don't trust me to live my life or to choose who to be around or to choose not to put myself in a situation to allow something like that to happen. Like, I understand other people's intentions might not be pure, but we deal with that every single day with people's intentions not being pure. But that doesn't change my character at the end of the day. But it was a big deal to him. So I wound up backing away from a lot of my family and friends to basically support my marriage because essentially, you know, that mattered to me. But let me rewind a little bit back to how we got married. Again, we were getting ready to deploy. We were in Texas at the time and 
he started saying, I feel like we need to get married. And I was like, I was like, I don't want to get married. I always wanted um, premarital counseling before I got married. And, you know, I, I, there were some things that I wanted for myself prior to marriage. And he just kept saying, well, you know, like, what, what happened with your sister? If something happens, then we need to be make sure that we're able to go back home with each other. If, um... If something happens to one of our family members. And you know that made sense. Because if anything happened. I would want him to be there with me. And if we weren't married. They wouldn't allow both people to go back. Then he was like saying like how. You know he wanted us to like be together on a deployment. And the only way to do that. Is if like you know we were married. And so I was like no. Well let me just think about it. Let me pray about it. I prayed about it. And like God started showing me little signs. I, after a while of him like trying to convince me, I decided, hey, you know, I'll, I'll get married to him because this is the person that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. Like, I loved, you know, everything about this man. It, there was nothing that I didn't love about him, even his flaws. And so we got married. We didn't tell anybody. And that was another thing. Like, when I look back, I'm like, I'm one of those people who love to share with my close people. So the fact that I didn't was kind of like, you were not confident in that decision, <laughs> Kiara. Like, you were not confident. But again, he was very persistent, just like he was in the dating phase or whatever. And so after that or whatever, he did ask my dad about marrying me. I think he did have the conversation with his mother about marrying me. He also had the conversation with his father about marrying me. And so, you know, these were conversations that he did have. However, it wasn't like a sure thing. Like, I'm going to do it. Well, now I'm going to do it then. But it was like, I'm going to do it. But I'm going to do it, you know, when I'm ready. But they had no idea, like, when that was going to be. And so we didn't tell anybody. Like, nobody knew. And I think, like, when everybody in our family or friend group found out, it was kind of around the same time. And it was just kind of like a, oh, you got a ring on? Are y'all married? Did y'all get married? Like, it was kind of like that. And it was like, yeah, like, we wasn't keeping it a secret. But we just didn't tell anybody. Like, if you asked us, we would have told you. So we just felt like it wasn't anybody else's business. Um, I don't even really know where that thought process is, where that thought process came from. I feel like it was just a lack of confidence in that decision. Like that's truly what I feel. We were young. He was twenty, I think. I was twenty-two. Um, we're getting ready to turn, you know, a year older though. But anyway, so after that or whatever, um, that's when I started going downhill. Like I started to struggle with my work like while I was deployed I feel like I was struggling like real bad mentally I was struggling with my work like I was a leader but I didn't want to do that shit like I didn't want to be there like I showed up from time to time but I, I wasn't present and then I did not hang around nobody but him I started seeing behavioral health and I kept wondering like what is going on but during that deployment we lived together in this little box. And so it was a lot of fights, a lot of fights, and a lot of, I don't need to be around certain people, blah, blah, blah. And like, I'm one of those people who thrive by being around good energy. And so he is total opposite. He's more of like a reserved, this like mean face. People don't really want to talk to him or fool with him. Um, he's not very kind. And yeah, and, and I'm the complete opposite of that. So it's just like our personalities really didn't like mesh together very well. And then we wanted to like getting a joint bank account too. And this was another like red flag that I wish I would have like paid attention to. So coming into this thing with this guy, like right now at this given point in my life and even where I was at at that point in my life, I was the type of female where like you had to bring to the table the equivalent of what I have or more. Well, I let my guard down with him because I had my own place. He didn't. I had a career-based job. He didn't. I had over $20,000 saved up. He didn't. I had my degree or getting ready to graduate when we first met. But by the time we deployed, I had my degree. He didn't complete school. So all, and then the story that he told me about him joining the military was kind of like a last resort thing. So all these things was showing me, hey, this is not a very committed and dedicated person. This is not a person who is driven. 
And so I did not pay attention to that because obviously I was young and I just did not, it didn't click in my head. But now when I look back, I think about one of the worst decisions I ever made was putting my finances with this person. Um, because I feel like he did it for his own benefit. Like he told me, oh, I don't want to be with anybody if we don't put all our money together. And I never had a personal bank account while I was with this man. However, he did. So that right there was already some sort of financial control. I will say this. He did not abuse our finances other than just spending like big money on like racing and the truck and stuff like that. But it, it is what it is. But he didn't like abuse it in a way that I feel like was like, yeah, you need to stop. Like, or I'm worried about our finances. Like it was never that. He didn't give me the, that energy. Like I can say financially, we were y'all we were a one like we were a one moving forward in a relationship i definitely want to be with somebody who is on the same page with me with our finances because i'm very thankful that he was because we are where we at today because of that so anyway long story short that is one of like my biggest regrets is putting all my money with him because why did i have to do that and why were you so persistent about that and so anyway also too he used to tell like his family and friends like oh yeah she's this she's a um leader in the military she has this and she has that and blah 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 and it was always like he was putting me up on a pedestal and one day he actually told me like he felt like his family was never proud of him and like he didn't go to college he didn't didn't have a career-based job you know he wasn't really working towards anything and he felt like they were never really proud of him the females that he chose his um his family were like degrading them and talking down about them when I came into the picture, which I didn't like because I'm not one of those girls that talk shit about other women. Like, I don't do that. So for them to do that, it's like, you'll talk shit about me. I'm pretty sure they'll talk shit about me now. Like, that's how I feel about that because if y'all do it about her, y'all will do it about me. Point blank, period. I don't care what anybody says. So that kind of made me feel away because I'm like, oh, you're basically just using me to make yourself look good you're using me to build but what about me on the flip side and I noticed this very early on however I don't think I really fully processed it and so I went on into the relationship and things never got better it was always that way always about his own gain and even his family came out about that saying that he doesn't do anything unless it directly benefits him and he will literally F over a person just so he can get what he wants. Um, he used to tell me there are two types of people in this world. There's the alpha and there's a the beta. The alpha is going to take what they want. And that's who he felt like he was. And so he also like he took me around like his family, his friends, uh, teachers, neighbors, stuff like that. And every time I was around anybody, they always used to be like, this man has changed so quick in six months. Like, he's dressing different. He's talking different. He's walking different. Like, he's a totally different person. What have you done to him? We are so proud of him. And they, like, everybody would say, like, oh, you need to marry her. And they would say, like, oh, y'all going to get married. Like, all this stuff. But then when I look back now, and, and we were so happy about it because, like, I was happy with him, you know, for the most part. But when I think about my needs being met, I made it all about him and he made it all about him so I really have to take some level of responsibility for that because I would I'm one of those people that like to kind of make my person's life easier so it's like I'm willing to do whatever for that person that I love but very rarely you know is that reciprocated or was that reciprocated in my marriage and when I look back, I'm like, no one ever said that about me. No one ever said, girl, you glowing. Girl, like, this is the happiest we ever seen you. No, people were saying to me, like, you're, you've changed. Like, you're different. Are you okay? Like, they were surprised that I was struggling with my mental. Like, all of these things. Like, and they would even ask me questions like, you're, you're safe with him, right? You're comfortable with him. And I would lie because... I like this person. I need to protect him. Like, he has struggles, and I'm not going to, you know, rat him out. Like, that, I'm a ride or die, blah, 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 blah. But then now I realize, like, love is not being a ride or die. Love is not being neglected emotionally and physically. And love that's not love. And love is not giving and giving and giving 
and watching a person take and take and take, but never pour back into you. Like, that's not love. That's not love. And, you know, when I think back about, like, just everything, I'm like, wow, like, the signs went there. And I just missed every single one of them. Every single one of them. Every single one of them. And like as we got home, you know, he got into his career and I decided that I wanted a career change and he supported me in that. However, I realized now that it was a way to control me because if I left my career that was paying more than him and I wasn't able to stand on my own two feet by myself, then now I have to rely on him. And his whole goal, I feel like the entire marriage, like when I'll go back and analyze things, was to break me down. He never complimented me. He knew guys were attracted to me. That a lot of guys tried to talk to me. He knew I came across a lot of like better candidates for men and stuff like that. And he would literally just never compliment me, never make me feel wanted, none of that. And I realize now it's a form of control. It's to make me feel lesser than, it's to like, you know, to confuse me, to make me feel like he doesn't want me and to start questioning my worth because he knew that I was a prize. Like he knew that. He knew like she's faithful. He knew that she is smart. He knew that she's going to do whatever it is that I need her to do for me. And I'll never have to worry about anything. He knew that I would love him with all of my heart. He knew that I only had eyes for him. Like, he knew these things. He knew that I was, like, I really was that bitch. Like, when I look back, I'm like, I was that bitch. Like, I cooked. I cleaned. I did everything. The errands. The finances. Everything. I was the brains in the relationship. And I don't, like, I used to be, like, humble about that. But now, no, like, I'm not going to sell myself short. I know that I'm a wife. I'm a good ass wife. And yes, I have challenges. And yes, I have, you know, things that I need to work on. But one thing he can't say is that I didn't do my part. And I can honestly look in the mirror and say I gave it my all. I may have fallen short in some places, but I gave it my all. But when I asked him that same question, he said that he couldn't look in the mirror and say that he, get, he had given it his all. He never felt that way in our marriage. And so... Like, when I look back now, I'm just like, he wanted to make me feel, like, lesser than. He wanted to make me feel like I wasn't pretty. Like, I wasn't confident. Like, I started questioning all that. I never was that type of girl. And, like, instantly, after our separation, my confidence came back. I was like, you know what? Like, I would look in the mirror and be like, girl, you pretty as hell. Like, don't you ever let nobody make you feel like you got a question if you're attractive or not. Like, you know you're pretty as hell. And you know... That you are confident. You know that you are smart. You know you that girl. You know that you have what it takes. You know that what you bring to the table, a lot of men don't get that. Like, I had a lot of conversations with men from as early as 20s to 30s to 40s up until a 66-year-old man I talked about marriage and divorce with. And when they told me their concerns in their marriage, it was nothing compared to to mine because the things that they lacked like was like sex or the finance finances were like a little wonky or infidelity like he never had to worry about none of that because like not trying to toot my own horn but whether I'm satisfied or not you're gonna be satisfied point blank period that's just and what like, you know I found myself like I started to not recognize myself and I think the, uh, that others around me started not to recognize me either, but they just didn't say anything. And um, the biggest thing that I walk away with now is knowing my worth, standing on my boundaries, and knowing that I am deserving of love and that what I bring to the table is, you know, still worth it. Like, I don't have to not do those things for the next person because the right person, the person that God has for me, will respect that and also too i won't have to beg and plead and cry and be a freaking emotional wreck begging somebody to show me attention affection love to show up for me to support me i won't have to do that when this person is truly sent by god and truly is my husband and you know um i do pray for my ex because i see potential in him like i i do and people tell me all the time like girl you give him too much grace, but I do. I see the potential in him. 
I know that he can be a better person. I do. However, I think it's going to take a lot of time alone and him truly working on himself without the distraction of women, friends, family. Like, he got to lock in with God. And then God's going to take him to new heights. Like, that's what I feel like has to happen. But that's not my concern. And, you know, I just pray for him and go on with my life. But, yeah, y'all, I just, I don't know. This was just like a little bit of just like my backstory with this man. And um, I have more videos coming. So you guys stay tuned. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you experience some of these same things, like let me know down in the comments, y'all. So I'll see y'all later in the next one. Thank you so much. And toodle doodles.